Thank you for joining this talk. My name is Ning Yu. I'm going to present our recent ICCV21 oral paper. We introduced the first proactive solution to defend against defect misuses. We enable generative model inventors to proactively embed artificial fingerprints into their models so as to close their responsibility loop between defect generation and detection. Generative models, especially generative adversarial networks, evolved fast in the past seven years for photorealistic generation. When we trace back, we witnessed the revolutionary progress from low quality, low resolution generation to artifact free, high resolution generation for face images. The evolution is happening even faster in the past three years for general image generation. With the improvement of generation quality, on the other hand, misuses of generative media raise concerns about visual misinformation. Can you tell which of the videos are real, which are fake? Well, four of them are fake, but it's hard and time consuming for humans to tell. Existing work that defend against the defect misuses are all passive classifiers. One of our earlier works targets to the real fake classification problem. Once fake images are detected, we further attribute to their generator sources. The follow-up passive method from Berkeley and Adobe improves its cross-domain generalization. However, none of us are sure about the sustainability of such passive methods as future development of defect techniques can circumvent existing detectors. For example, malicious generator inventors can take advantage of anti-detection training in the frequency domain to mislead existing detectors. To be sustainable in this cat and mouse game, we are thinking about using a proactive solution instead of passive detection. The gist is to enable responsible release and regulation of generators so as to be independent of the arms race between generation and detection. In specific, we apply artificial fingerprinting for generative models, that is, we enable inventors to fingerprint their generators such that generated images contain fingerprints that can be identified and attributed. Our envision scenario is as follows. First, responsible generator inventors learn to incorporate unique artificial fingerprint codes into generators and learn a fingerprint detector to detect fingerprints from reconstructed images. In such a manner, inventors are able to instantiate different generator versions with different fingerprints, each version deployed for a user download. After deployment, because each generated image contains a unique fingerprint associated with its generator source, when a misuse happens, generators can use their fingerprint detector to attribute which generator download made this misuse. We can see that we allow inventors themselves to detect their generated medium at the same time when they create their powerful generators. As a result, we enable them to close the responsibility loop between the fake generation and detection. The learning pipeline is simple yet effective. It's established on the assumption that fingerprints can accurately transfer from training images through generator models to generated images. We will validate this assumption in the experiments. So first, we train an autoencoder on real training images. The encoder takes a real image and a fingerprint code as input and outputs a reconstructed image. The fingerprint is randomly sampled as a vector of 100 bits. We apply MSE reconstruction laws in the image domain to encourage the fidelity of reconstruction as well as the secrecy of fingerprints. The detector takes the reconstructed image as input and outputs a reconstructed fingerprint code. We apply bitwise binary cross entropy loss in the fingerprint domain to encourage the detection accuracy. In the next step, we apply the well trained encoder to fingerprint the entire training dataset with the same code, resulting in a fingerprint dataset. Then we train any generative model in the original way using the fingerprint dataset. So from this step, we can see our solution is agnostic to defect techniques and is plug and play without modifying their techniques. We assign different fingerprints for different generator downloads. During testing, we use the well-trained detector to detect fingerprints from the generated images and match them to the encoded fingerprint. So in our experiments, we consider four evaluation axes. 
The first axis is to validate our assumption that is the transferability of artificial fingerprints. We require fingerprints encoded in the training images should present in the generated images. The second axis is to measure the generation fidelity. We require encoded fingerprints do not hurt the original generation quality and keep invisible to human eyes. The third axis is to evaluate the robustness of fingerprints. We require encoded fingerprints should persist within a reasonably wide range of perturbations because malicious users may intentionally or unintentionally process fingerprint images or models before misuse. The fourth axis is to test on our initial motivation, that is deepfake detection and attribution. We require our artificial fingerprinting solution to convert the complex uh, classification problem to the simple fingerprint verification problem. For the validation of fingerprint transferability, we measure it by the bitwise detection accuracy between the encoded and detected fingerprints, the higher the better. We we'll find that the accuracy of our solution reaches more than 93% accuracy for all the datasets, where most of them reach an almost saturated 99% accuracy. So in addition, to validate the high detection accuracy is not by chance we use hypothesis testing based on the number of matching bits, where the null hypothesis is a chance of matching calculated by the p-value, the higher the more likely the null hypothesis is happening. We find that our experiments have almost a zero chance to accept the null hypothesis, indicating the high accuracy matching between encoded and detected fingerprints are not by chance, but rather by the transferability of fingerprints. In contrast, two JPEG-based image watermarking baselines reach only 50% accuracy, close to random guess. This indicates that Fingerprinting deep generating models is a non-trivial task. Only deep fingerprints like ours are transferable through the state-of-the-art deep generating models, while traditional shallow watermarking methods do not work. For the evaluation of generation fidelity, we measure the FID of generated images from fingerprinted generator, the lower the better, and compare it to the FID of the corresponding non-fingerprinted generator. We find that our solution guarantees no more than 9% FID degradation, while a baseline method of reconstructing fingerprints directly with uh, generator training fails to preserve fidelity. This indicate that fingerprinting generative models without hurting the original fidelity is non-trivial. Our implicit way through fingerprinting training data sidesteps this challenge. We visualize the high fidelity of our fingerprinting for progressive growing gain on Celeb A. The first group of images are original real training data. The second group are the fingerprinted training data where we barely see any visible fingerprints. The third group are the image differences where pixel values have to be magnified 10 times to be perceptible on the screen. The fourth group are the generated data from non-fingerprinted generator as a reference. And finally, the fifth group are the generated data from fingerprinted generator, where again, the fingerprints are barely visible, but still can be detected by our fingerprint detector. Here we visualize the imperceptible fingerprints for Stalgan 2 on Elson Cat, and one more result for Cat on Horse to Zebra. For the evaluation of fingerprint robustness, we show our fingerprint detection accuracy on perturbed images with respect to different amount of perturbations, including four types of image perturbations, Gaussian noise, Gaussian blurring, JPEG compression, and center cropping, and two types of model perturbations, model quantization and model noise. For all the perturbations, fingerprint detection accuracy drops as perturbation strengthens while for non-extreme perturbations, accuracy drops rather slowly. We consider accepting 75% accuracy at the fingerprint matching standard line. This results in a reasonably wide working range for each perturbation. In fact, as we show in the image samples, before fingerprint detection accuracy degrades to 75%, image qualities have already visually degraded to a non-acceptable level. This means malicious users have to sacrifice their image utility heavily before they can circumvent our fingerprint detector. 
Finally, it comes back to our initial motivation, that is defect detection and attribution. In case a misuse happens, generator inventors are able to detect if this misuse is from their technique or not. If so, they can further tell which user did it by looking up the fingerprint in their database. We evaluate such a scenario on 8,000 images using the detection or attribution accuracy with respect to their label ground truth. For defect detection, 4,000 testing images are real with no fingerprints, and the other 4,000 are generated from four different fingerprinted generators. We label an image as generated if the detected fingerprint matches a fingerprint in the database with more than 75% number of bits. For defect attribution, testing images are equally from four different fingerprinted generators. We attribute an image to, to the generator source that has the maximum number of matching bits. We show in our scenario that our solution achieves saturated accuracy for defect detection and attribution. It makes these tasks not challenging anymore by converting the original learning problem to a simple fingerprint verification problem. In contrast, the passive detection baseline GAN fingerprints as a learning-based method does not generalize to unseen generators. The follow up passive baseline CNN detection improves from the earlier work, but is still worse than ours and is not applicable to the defect attribution scenario. Our code and models are available online. Thank you for listening.